Nigeria's business environment in the course of the week was active with a lot of activities from the executive to the legislature and other agencies of government implementing policies that will strengthen Nigeria's economy the more. Now, one of such is the passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill by the National Assembly. It is indeed a major achievement for the nation, having been the longest bill in the nation's parliament. Now, in a swift reaction, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, has emphasized that some unnecessary expenditure will definitely have to go following the passage. What are the expenditures? This we shall extensively analyze in today's package. Also, the African Development Bank has developed a new strategy for African countries as the continent is trying to stabilize its economies. You will agree with me that it was indeed a busy uh, week for the Nigerian economy. And that's our focus on Business 24 for today. I am Comfort and Madhu. And I know you're already guessing maybe this package will be devoid of the other complementary segments. Don't be too much in a hurry as our export tips and capital market review segment will come to you in style. Once again, welcome to Business 24. Elijah. Welcome back. And we will start with the issues around the newly passed Petroleum Industry Bill, which when signed into law, the oil and gas market will become more competitive and will definitely reflect the yearnings of stakeholders in the oil and gas sector. At the House of Representatives, the report on the PIB bill was considered and approved. Let's find out how that turned out at both chambers from Lami Ali. Consideration of the report began with a closed-door session involving the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources and the Group Managing Director of the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation. Two hours after the executive session, Senators began clause-by-clause -clause consideration of the bill presented by the Senate Joint Committee on Petroleum Downstream, Upstream and Gas. One pass into law will strengthen the accountability, transparency of the NMPC Limited as a full-pledged karma company under statutory regulations, oversight with better returns to its shareholders, the Nigerian people. This gas flaring is making people sick. It is damaging the environment. The remediation we seek is not construction of pipelines. They are optimistic that the bill, which is made up of five chapters, which include governance and institutions, administration, host communities development, fiscal framework and miscellaneous provisions will bring about the long-awaited change in the oil and gas sector. But a point of order from Senator Ahmed Bakaita resulted in the reduction of the 5% for host communities development fund to 3%. The amendment is just instead of 5% to read 3%. This elicited a call for division from Senator George Sekibo, which was eventually withdrawn. That you increase the number a little bit and put the question again. The bill also made provision for 30% of funding for exploration of frontier basins across the country and making the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation a commercial and limited liability company. Those in favor that this bill be now read the third time, say I. Those against say nay, the eyes have it. At least. The demons have been defeated in this chamber. We have passed the bill by the grace of God. And let me also say that this is a, one of the products of the executive and the legislature working together. The Petroleum Industry Bill has been the longest bill in the Nigerian Parliament and has visited four assemblies. Ignatius Nkwo takes us through the journey of the proposed law at the National Assembly.
June 2021 marks the end of an era in Nigeria's top legislative arm of government, the termination of the Petroleum Industry Bill 18 years parliamentary journey. The Petroleum Industry Bill was conceived during the Olusegun Basanjo administration in 2000 as part of recommendations by the Oil and Gas Sector Reform Implementation Committee headed by Dr. Rilwanu Lukman. Its first legislative courtship with the National Assembly was in the Fourth Assembly in 2003 as an executive bill. Like a new bride, the Petroleum Industry Bill received great acceptance by the legislators in view of its potential to reform Nigeria's oil and gas sector, open up the industry, attract investors and give adequate attention to host communities. But at the time, it turned out into a parliamentary tug of war and its courtship with the Sixth Assembly did not go beyond second reading. The Seventh Assembly also failed to pass it, while the Eighth Assembly broke the bill into four versions, that is, the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill, Petroleum Hosts and Impacted Community Bill, Petroleum Industry Administration Bill, and the Petroleum Industry Fiscal Bill. That assembly was able to pass only the governance version, which did not receive presidential assent due to some critical observations made by the executive. Because it had so many... Uh uh, what I would, what was called impurities then, uh, so many reservations, so much monies were given to different of the agencies under the petroleum, and then Mr. President considered that there will be less money available for the federation account to distribute. In virtually uh, able point of engagement, we have had so many challenges. Challenges to do with some political reasons, some issues, uh, even. Uh, uh, sentiments as regards uh, uh, issues to do with the host communities, uh, issues to do with the cost of uh, uh, oil pricing. The Ninth National Assembly, in consultation with the executive, ensured that the areas of contention were addressed, especially the regulatory authority and the percentage of dividends to host communities. This time, as a single bill from the executive has been passed by the Senate. First time in this, uh, within these two years, we had a retreat. We never had it before in the history of uh, this assembly, uh, the, we are, the, uh, the executive and the legislature will spend two, two, three days to have a retreat. The enactment of the Petroleum Industry Bill into law is long overdue, having engulfed huge sums of money for retreats and consultations since 2003. It has seen Nigeria incur losses from regulatory uncertainties in the sector, with some individuals and companies taking advantage of the legal loopholes. I know you must have caused the federal government huge sums of money doing retreat abroad, even in Nigeria. But the good news is that the oil producing communities in Nigeria will have a sigh of relief with this, with this bill. The passage of this bill into law is expected to be the game changer that will fully unlock the Nigerian oil and gas sector. And Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning Zainab Ahmed says government is excited by passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill by the Senate and insists subsidy on petrol must go to give more fiscal room for meaningful development. The minister disclosed this at a public consultation on the draft 2022 to 2024 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. Leah Katumba Batunde was there for Business 24. The public consultation is the first in the series before the draft document is made into a working medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. 13.98 trillion naira is the planned expenditure for 2022. Upscaling revenues is the biggest task before policy makers at the moment as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. 900 billion naira is being planned for payment of subsidies, but the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning Zainab Ahmed says resting the unsustainable subsidy regime is long overdue. So we do need to get rid of subsidy completely. That is our view in the ministry. It's not a popular view uh, by Labour, but that will be the most practical thing to do. Right now, we are subsidizing not only consumption in Nigeria, but consumption within the whole region. We have a, a price of about 165 naira per dollar. 
But our neighbors are selling PMS at about $500. So the beneficiaries are actually the marketers that are taking this foil from Nigeria across to our neighboring country. They are the ones that are making the profit. A look at the macroeconomic projections driving the plan show oil prices standing at $57 in 2022 and production at 1.88 million barrels per day. Inflation 13% in 2022. 10% in 2024, with GDP rising by 4.2% in 2022 and 2.3% in 2024. And if the necessary reforms uh, that we project, like the removals of some of these uh, subsidies, so we will have a lot of funds uh, available to be able to grow uh, our GDP higher than our population. The draft 2022 to 2024 MTF and FSP has been prepared against the backdrop of global economic recovery amidst improved vaccination outlook and lower incidence of infection. All right, let's turn our attention to the African Development Bank as it develops a new strategy for African countries as the continent strategizes on ways to recover from the impact of COVID-19. The strategy which supports social and economic development of the continent was unveiled at the just concluded annual meeting of the bank in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. The African Development Bank Group is a financial institution established primarily to promote the social and economic development of the continent. The bank was founded in 1964 and comprises three entities, the African Development Bank, the African Development Fund, and the Nigeria Trust Fund. The bank's shareholders and officials from across the globe met in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire last week for talks that centered around Africa's economic recovery and COVID response. Welcome to the 2021 annual meetings. Setting the tone for an ambitious week of talks, the bank's president, Akimumi Adeshina, brought to the four issues affecting the continent as a result of the outbreak of COVID-19. Africa faced its worst economic recession in over 50 years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, Africa's GDP declined by 2.1% in 2021. But growth is projected to recover to 3.4% by this year and also next year better. The deep scars of the pandemic are really there and will take time to heal. The bank presented what it terms as the African stability mechanism with liquidity and sustainability bailout facility to provide instant emergency funding to countries. One potential area for high returns on investment is acting to lower what economists call trade costs, the costs associated with moving goods from the factory gate to the final consumer. This would raise the productive capacity of African economies, ultimately reducing real debt burdens while helping build regional value chains and increasing the global competitiveness of firms on the continent. This is also an opportunity for us for a call to collective action to uh, include things like acceleration clauses in our, in our credit uh, that we write, to also use state contingent debt instruments to help us to boost our uh, our management or public financial management that in, in Nigeria we will be making a lot of effort to, on a quarterly basis, disclose all the debts that we are, are borrowing and also to, to indicate what the debt service is. Before the coronavirus pandemic, Africa was home to six of the fastest growing economies in the world. This changed as economies went into lockdown, travel was restricted, tourism dried up, while commodity prices plummeted because of weakened global demand for exports of oil, gas, and commodities.
Also, African Development Bank has launched a comprehensive five-year strategy for economic governance in Africa, and this is towards building resilient economies on the continent. The strategy also contains proposals on how African countries can achieve long-term economic growth and social development. Let's now listen to some of the highlights of the meeting. There is also a need for greater transparency regarding the accumulation of public debt. And it would be untenable for governments to borrow on behalf of their nations and future generations without fully disclosing the terms and sometimes even the existence of this debt. For such recovery to be long lasting and resilient, African countries must be prepared to embark on bolder and stronger reforms to their economic governance. 45% of exposure were in the energy sector with a total commitment of $531 million 40% in multi-sector with a total commitment of $165 million, 11% in agriculture and fishery sector with a total commitment of $129 million and 31% of remaining exposure were in other sectors with a total uh, uh, distributed in water and sanitation, finance, science and technology, private sector, environment and transport. This is why the strategy for economic governance in Africa could not have come at a better time. Public administration has improved, property rights and rule-based governance has improved, and the quality of budgetary and financial management has also improved in several countries of the continent. These improvements, however, are not sufficient to address the looming challenges that Africa faces, especially post COVID-19 pandemic. We recognize uh, that the African governments has the primary role of improving uh, public sector governance in their countries, but as well as the premier development bank in Africa, the African Development Bank remained very committed to support African governments on this journey because without it, our core objective of seeing development improvements on the continent will not be achieved. If African governments and the bank and all partners are able to address just one of these key challenges I've mentioned, illicit financial flows, we will be able to recover up to $88.6 billion that leave African continent through illicit financial, illicit capital flows annually. And the federal government has welcomed the proposal by Pan-African Financial Institution, Afrixin Bank, to invest $2.5 billion in the Nigerian economy with focus on oil and gas, health and manufacturing sectors. Mitaire Ipen reports that investment would further reposition Nigeria as an economic hub in Africa. Afrexim Bank's multi-billion dollar investments in Nigeria will include an African Medical Center of Excellence in Abuja that will offer a full range of medical services covering oncology and cardiovascular treatment. The aim is to promote intra-Africa medical tourism with Nigeria as a hub. We will also support Nigeria to uh, begin to manufacture pharmaceuticals, especially vaccines, uh, given the situation with the world has found itself. The federal government views Afrexim Bank's decision to increase its investment portfolio in Nigeria as an indication of the country's viability for foreign direct investments. We need every support uh, from financial institutions uh, that have the capacity and the knowledge uh, to help us uh, sustain the modest gains that have been made. 
In spite of the adverse effect of COVID-19, uh, Nigeria has demonstrated that its economy is resilient. I think that the superhighway and the deep seaport, which is what I shared intimately with the SGM, is the way to go to be able to open a vista of opportunity for northern Nigeria because the, 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 the level of abundance of these materials so huge, but they lie waste because the travel time from northern Nigeria to Lagos, which is the closest spot you would say, is in the level of 1,700 kilometers. Nigeria's business environment has been consistently active over the years. Export and importation keep thriving. And in case your interest is in the former, these export teams are for you. All over the world, even before the pandemic, most of the world are actually moving towards technology. And that's the role of e-commerce and e-business. People are moving from brick and wall only. They are moving to uh, e-businesses, digital businesses. And uh, in Africa, Nigeria is one of the most developed economy in terms of e-commerce presence. So we can leverage on this to, you know, uh, you can be in Lagos and other things in Abuja, it will get to you in a few days. It's just to upscale, you know, such structure in a way that it can be useful for cross-border trade. That's, that's, that's where the world is going to. Uh, so many countries are participating now in e-commerce agreement uh, proposal at the WTO. And Nigeria is the only uh, African country currently that is signing up to being disposed to discussing e-commerce. The rest of Africa are not disposed to multilateral negotiation on e-commerce. But it is important to talk about it because that's where the world is going to. We will be, we'll be doing more of e-businesses. We'll be doing more of e-trade e -trade facilitation than ever before. So what that means is that all the physical structures, all the brick and wall structure that we have created in Nigeria for trade and export, we must automate those processes. We must make sure exporters can see it uh, at the comfort there of their homes and be able to do business. Exporter does not actually have to come to the port to do businesses and declare their good in six hours. If you need any inquiry, you just need to log on onto the, the customs inquiry point. And you are sorted in a matter of a few minutes. And you know, you know the Indonesia exports, uh, exporters actually from the national single window of Indonesia, they have national single window authority. You know uh, the classification of your goods online. You are able to by yourself calculate the duty that you will pay. You pay your duty and, uh, you know, instead of all these physical inspections that take time and uh, you see uh, 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 lines of trucks, you just pass the thing through electronic, it detects everything, and you go. You know, it's not rocket science to, you know, automate all of those things. It facilitates trade, it's increased volume of trade, and it's increased revenue. When you place trade facilitation beyond revenue collection, at the end of the day, you will realize that you're actually making more money because of the rate of turnaround of exports. That's all from us here on Business 24. Connect with us again on the next edition of the program next week. I'm Comfort Amadou. Bye-bye for now.